Good evening. How's everybody? Good? Yeah. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for inviting me to your territory. It's my honor. And, uh, and what a pleasure to hear a lecture about your culture as well. That's, that's great. Um, my name is Laurie Chan. Um, I, um, I was born and grew up in Hong Kong. Uh, I got most of my education in, in England. I came to Canada in uh, 1989. I studied in Western University and then uh, after three years, I went to McGill University, start, start my career as a researcher, as a toxicologist. So toxicologist is, is uh, basically, I, I, I do a lot of research looking at the effects of these different environmental chemicals on human health. So um, starting from my very beginning of my career, I started working with um, First Nations and the Inuit, uh, looking at traditional food safety. So because um, when I was at McGill, I was working with the um, uh, people in Kanawage, uh, because uh, people were very worried about the fish that they collect from the St. Lawrence River, whether it's eat, uh, safe to eat or not. Right? So we did a lot of study looking at how much fish people are eating, how much, what, what sort of contaminants are in the fish, and we also implemented a program teaching kids to eat more traditional food. Because um, it has been like, okay, <laughs> it's been like about um, 30 years uh, 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 since we started, but uh, I have worked with uh, over 100 communities ac across Canada. And no matter where we go, we find out that uh, the traditional food is always nutritious, always good for your health. And people uh, are not eating enough of it. Especially the young kids, they're not eating as, as, as much. So we're trying to, to, to see whether we can help to implement programs to, to teach the kids to eat more. Uh, as I said, I, I've been working with many First Nations uh, uh, really to address the concern of environmental pollution. And we see that all the time because of industry is around, the river is polluted, etc. So, um, uh, and, and, and in many First Nations, you still, people still want to eat fish and, and wildlife. So the concern really is that, uh, uh, is, is the food, is, is it okay to eat, right? So the, the problem that we have is that uh, measuring all these contaminants in, 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 in different food or fish is very expensive. Uh, we're talking about maybe $2,000 to $3,000 per sample. So when we actually try to do a, a good job looking at all the food samples that you eat, it costs us a lot of money, right? And also because we have found out that uh, uh, community to community, there's a lot of, of differences. Uh, people eat different food, uh, families eat different amount of food. So in order to answer whether food is safe to eat or not, we need to understand what food are you eating, right? And how much, and, and where do you get the food? So that is the reason that uh, we, over the years, we've been working in different communities and said, in, in the end we said, why don't we work with a representative number of communities across the country at the same time so that we can set up what we call a baseline study, right? Something we know once and for all, at this point of time, First Nations in Canada, what, what is the traditional food like? Is it safe to eat, right? So back in 2007, uh, uh, I, I work with uh, Assembly of First Nations and we convinced Health Canada to give us money uh, in the total amount of $10 million over 10 years to, di to do this project. Right? In principle, the best thing to do is to work with all First Nations in Canada. So we have to work with over 700 First Nations communities, which is impossible. So we, uh, uh, the, the, the next best thing is that we decided to do one province per year. Or, or in, because in uh, BC and Ontario is a bigger province, we said, well, we spent two years in BC and two years in Ontario, and we do a representative number of communities in those provinces and to see, to provide us with a snapshot of, of what the situation is like. Right? So uh, that's the beginning of this study called First Nations Food Nutrition and Environment Study started in 2007, and now this is um, uh, the six year, seven year of us running the program now, okay? So um, in three years ago, uh, I, I came and, and, and uh, asked the communities to participate in the study, and, and today I'm very happy to come and talk to you about what we have found, okay? Now, I do, I do speak with a Chinese accent, and I do speak quite fast, 
So if, if you can't follow, just, just stop me and, and, and ask me questions. Don't, don't be shy to interrupt me anytime. OK? So first of all, I have to thank a number of people. So um, all the people um, in, in the project, we really uh, 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 cannot do the project without the uh, total engagement of the community yourself. So uh, from, the, from the chief and council and the health director and all the, all the uh, research assistants that, uh, that, that have participated in our team, they, they did all the hard work in collecting all the samples and data. Thank you so much. And, and, and of course, uh, how many people participated in this study in the audience? No? Nobody did the questionnaire interviews? Oh, okay. So anyway, about 140 families in the community participate in the study. And I really thank them because uh, they gave us you know, two or three hours of their time and, and really provided us with a lot of information. Okay. So um, I'm not the only researcher in the team. Uh, we put together a, a, a very good team. I'm, a, I'm the toxicologist. Uh, I teach at the University of Ottawa. Uh, we have uh, uh, two nutritionists in the uh, University of Montreal. Uh, first, uh, uh, Assembly of First Nations, uh, William David, uh, uh, is, a, a trained, is a Mohawk uh, with an environmental training from MIT. Uh, and Health Canada uh, not only gave us money, but also gave us in kind support to measure some hair samples as well. And uh, of course, all the participating communities are, are the key partners in the team. So what do we want to do? Uh, the study really is want to try to answer these questions. So uh, what kind of traditional food and market food people are eating? Uh, what is the diet like in terms of quality? Uh, what contaminants, if there are any, are in the traditional foods and the water? Uh, are they of any health concern? Are they, are they are food safe? Is the water safe to drink? Right? So very straightforward questions uh, that we get asked all the time in many communities, and we try to provide a scientific answer to it. Okay. So to do that, we need to do research. And, and, and uh, over the years, uh, uh, we, we understand that there are many researchers who don't do responsible research. So there are now all sorts of guidelines like OCAP principles, etc., that, that uh, basically tell researchers how to work with communities. And we follow all the guidelines. We, we, we follow to the T, basically. So um, uh, everything that, that uh, uh, is all total partnership, it's not, this is not our project, not, not the researcher's project. This is our project together. Right? And today, uh, we talk about the results. It's part of the research process. It's not the end of the project. We will look at the results, and we decide what is the next step. Okay. So the project has really uh, five components. To answer those questions, we have a, a very detailed uh, questionnaire asking people their diet, their health, uh, what food they are harvesting, and some food security questions. And I'll explain what food security is in a minute. Uh, then we, have a, 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 we collect traditional food for, some, uh, for contaminant analysis. We collect uh, drinking water from uh, house, uh, house taps for, for look at look at trace metals. Uh, we collect surface water in the rivers and lakes to look for pharmaceuticals. Uh, these are like drugs uh, that people take. Uh, the, re the reason that we do that is because there's some concern that because the, some of the surface water is contaminated by human sewage, right? If we if we uh, take certain medicine. When we pee, when we poo, it comes out, right? So if the water is contaminated by human sewage, uh, it, the, the, the medicine that we take will we'll we'll be seen in the water as well, right? So that's why we check for that. And um, fish is a very important part of tra tra traditional diet in many First Nations. So, um, and, and fish, uh, many fish have high levels of mercury. And over the years, many communities uh, have seen high levels of mercury, some from industry, some from natural process, primarily from eating fish. So one way to look at uh, whether people are having in, uh, uh, mercury issues is to measure mercury in the hair. So that's why we also collect some hair samples and measure for hair mercury and see whether there's a problem or not. 
Okay. So in Ontario, um, when we, uh, 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 three years ago, we also um, uh, talked to chiefs of Ontario and got their support. And the chiefs of Ontario uh, gave us a list of all the communities. And then we um, randomly pick, basically put all the names of the communities in a hat and randomly pick these com 18 communities. You can see that um, the Ajuam down there, Mansi, you guys, uh, and then Agrasasne on the east, uh, and then uh, all the uh, 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 Fort Albany, Moose Creek in the north, uh, Fort William, uh, etc., Wabi Creek in, in, the, in the west. So it covers basically a good coverage of, of, of Ontario. Okay? So, so in all the results I present, I will present the Six Nations results and compare to the Ontario, or, or the Ontario results. So you can see how you sort of compare with the, the average of all 18 Ontario communities, okay? So in total, um, uh, 14, uh, about 14,000 people in, Ontario, in First Nations participate in the studies, okay? So in total, about uh, 896 female, 533 males, so a bit more uh, women than men. Uh, average age is uh, 38. Uh, in six nations, uh, about 10%, about 140 people uh, participated. Again, more women than men. Average age is a little bit older than average. It's 49 for female, 55 more for male. Okay, so uh, in, in six nations, we target 200 houses. So basically, we, we got the list of all the houses from the Chiefs and Council. We randomly picked 200 houses. And then uh, uh, the research assistant invite uh, each household to participate. So in total, you can see that 142, that means that the, the participation rate is about 70%, right? So 30% of the houses, uh, either we could not uh, approach them or they, were, they, declined, they decided not to participate because of different reasons. Okay, so it's oh, okay. Our target is above seventy percent, so 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 it's acceptable. Uh, now the, the way that we sample uh, uh, is when we pick randomly pick two hundred houses, when uh, the house household agree to partic participate, we come into the house and ask who is the next uh, who has the next birthday coming up. Okay, so the person within the house, for example, will be the daughter. Uh, who is uh, old, older than 18 years old, the next birthday coming up, then she will be asked to participate. If it is the, the grandfather's birthday coming up, then the grand grandfather will be asked to participate. Right? So it's a sort of double randoming process. Yeah? So this is the way that we try to ensure there's no selection bias, so that when we come to the community, uh, even though we only have 140 people, they are kind of represent all the adults in the, in the communities. Okay. Now this pie chart shows the age group in the, in the households. So um, in, in all the First Nations in Ontario, about 70% of the people are 50 to 65 years old. Uh, about 19% uh, are under 15, about 10% is older than 65. In Six Nations, very, very similar, uh, but a bit more elderly people. 18% older than 65, than con Ontario average. And the uh, younger population is not as, as huge, for only 14%. Okay? What, when, when we actually uh, asked people to re report health problem, uh, we found out that uh, overweight and obesity is, is a common issue. In the whole of Ontario, about 49% are obese, 34% over overweight, 16, only 16% 16 are normal weight, 1% is underweight. Uh, in Six Nations, very similar, uh, slightly higher, 55% compared to 49% 
obesity. Uh, so very similar issues of overweight problem in Six Nations, and, uh, and the same issues across of all First Nations in Ontario as well. And we, we as a, uh, uh, and we know that uh, 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 overweight is a risk factor for disease like diabetes. And we is so it's not surprising to see that uh, the self-reported diabetes, this is not, uh, this is, uh, 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 the, the, the participant told us that they had diabetes. So 32% um, or one in three adults uh, have diabetes, so it's very high. So in the Canadian general average, it's only 5%, so one in 20. Uh, uh, and across Ontario, 30%. So uh, again, in First Nations, slightly more people having diabetes. And majority of them, 70%, 73% are type two diabetes. So it's related to diet, overweight, uh, exercise. Uh, and 9% are type one, 18% they didn't know. Okay. So this is something, uh, because obesity is a, a terrible disease. It, it, it uh, affects, uh, it, it results in a lot of very uh, uh, unconvenient and, and uh, painful symptoms. So, it, it, and it's reversible. Uh, if we can, uh, can do something about it, uh, it the, the symptoms can recede. So, uh, uh, we need to do more in the communities to promote better health, weight watch, and, 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 and uh, uh, decrease the rate of obesity. I think it's very important. The other thing is smoking. Uh, across Ontario, almost half of the people smoke. Uh, uh, in Six Nations, better, one in three. Right? Still not good, but it's better. Okay? So it's still room to improve, right? but be better than the uh, Ontario average. So in terms of um, uh, use of traditional food, uh, so uh, the orange bar is Six Nations, uh, is, is uh, Ontario, First Nations, the sort of the yellow bar is Six Nations. Okay, so when you see see that um, in Six Nations, you guys are doing more gardening and collecting wild plant food than than uh, average Ontario First Nations, but you do less fishing and less hunting. Right? Think about other First Nations. Some of them are in the north, right? So they mo they do more hunting and fishing but you guys do more gardening and getting wild food. Okay. But overall, 73% uh, uh, of the people say that they would like to eat more traditional food. So, uh, and the main reason that they can't eat more tra traditional food is because of lack of time, lack of knowledge how to get them, lack of hunters in the family, uh, difficult to get access, uh, the government restrictions or uh, industry or other farming restrictions that they cannot go hunting right, or fishing. So food security. So what we, what, uh, 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 in the past when we say food security means not having enough food to eat, basically. But now these days we have broadened the definition of food security a little bit and the definition is like this. Household food security is defined as when all people at all times have physical and economic access to sufficient, safe and nutritious food to meet their dietary needs and food preferences for active and healthy life. Okay? So whenever people say that uh, there's some food that I like to eat, cultural food, important food, and I cannot get it, there's food, some mild food insecurity. Right? When people cannot afford to buy any food at all, then there's severe food insecurity. Okay, and then we see a, a picture like this. Uh, in all of Ontario, seven, about seventy-one percent of people are food secure, no problem. Twenty-one percent are moderate insecure, so sometimes they don't get the food that they like. Eight percent are severe insecure, so sometimes they don't have enough food to eat at all, right? So, in Six Nations similar, uh, but higher, uh, uh, the food insecurity is not as bad. Actually, it's pretty good. Well, it's not pretty good. It's, it's not as bad. So 6% so more people food secure, 
Uh, the moderate insecure is 17% compared to 21. Uh, in uh, severe insecure is 6% compared to 8%. Now in the inner city in Toronto, the percentage uh, uh, is about 10% food insecurity. Okay, so uh, no, in, in first nation, so where, where there shouldn't be any reason for uh, like when you add the 17 plus 6 together, it is 23%. So it's on the high side. So people, especially that 17%, is really people don't get enough traditional food. I think that's the main reason. Okay. And one of the reasons that people have food secu security problems is because the food is more expensive in, the, in some communities than the others. So what we do is that we compare the, the cost of buying a basket of food uh, in, in to feed a family of four for a week. So in, in that basket co costs about $200 in Ottawa. Uh, here, actually, in six stations, it's cheaper than Ottawa. So, so the cost of, the, uh, of getting grocery in six stations actually is not an issue. Right? In some northern communities, the cost can be $400, twice as much of the same basket. So the more remote the communities, the, the more expensive. The, the same commodity is. So in six nations, so it's not because of cost, right? So it's primarily because of primary accessibility, right? Now when we look at the uh, quality of the diet of the people, okay? So in Health Canada, uh, well, the nutritionists try to always compare to the food guide. So uh, see whether people are adding a balanced diet or not. So anyway, you, you just uh, 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 an example to, to show the quality. Uh, it's not a sort of a, a must. Uh, so First Nations are eating more meat than recommended, okay? And, and eating less vegetable, grain products, and milk than recommended. Okay, yes. And as a result, uh, we saw that in general, people are eating more sodium or salt than what, what we recommend. Uh, the, the, some of the nutrients are good, like be, uh, mostly meat related, like iron, vitamin B12, riboflavin, etc. Some vitamins, uh, some other nutrients are not adequate. For example, like vitamin A, C, D, calcium. So it's more sort of vegetable, dark green vegetable related nutrients, not good enough. Okay. So, uh, some of the major source of fat is beef. So probably people eating a lot of burger, uh, beef because it, uh, the burger is feed uh, uh, is beef and have lots of fat. Uh, saturated fat is beef and processed meat like cold cut and sausage, so like hot dogs and sandwich and and burgers. Those are some high fat, high high saturated fat. Canned soups and processed meat is main source of salt, right? So if you can actually reduce the amount of this food, will be better. Will improve the diet quality. Right. Now, in terms of traditional food, um, in the in, in on Ontario average, uh, the average is about three teaspoons per day, or one and a quarter cup per week, of of all traditional food put together. In Six Nations, you guys are eating about half of that. So on average, you eat less traditional food than the average Ontario First Nation. Okay, so only one and a half teaspoon a day. So the main traditional food people are report eating uh, is deer, corn, kidney beans, yellow perch, and walleye. Those are the top five. Uh, we pot using it from uh, a corn is the most common, uh, fish not so common, deer about half of the people say eating it. This is the number of time per year people report eating it. So that's why you can see that very few people eat fish, right? So only, only less than 30% people eat fish and only twice a year. Right? Does it make sense? This is the sort of five main food, yeah. Mm. 
However, even though the amount of tradi traditional food people eating is not a whole lot, right, only three te teaspoons, but however, because the quality of the, the traditional food usually is very good. So when we see that when people, in, in the days that people eat traditional food, compared to the days that people don't eat traditional, just market food, the nutrition quality is better, right? So whenever people eat traditional food, the quality of the diet is better. Right? So that's why it's good to eat more traditional food. Now we also uh, obtained uh, or collected uh, a total of 83 samples of 19 different species, uh, like game meat, uh, deer meat, deer liver, kidney, moose meat, Canada goose, wild turkey, different fish, uh, different plants, etc. And, 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 and we uh, measure about 15 different types of contaminants in each one of these food. Okay? In, the, in the report that you have a copy of, uh, you see the details, tables and tables of those results. So I'm not going to go into details of what, what contaminants we found. But basically, the key conclusion is that we look at pesticides, we look at lead metals like lead, we look at mercury, everything we look at, they don't look to be very high. And because you guys don't eat a lot of traditional food, so the amount that you eat shouldn't pose any problem at all in terms of contaminants to health. Okay? So there are lots of room that you can eat more traditional food right, to get the benefit of nutrients before you have to worry about contaminants. Okay? So the take home message is that Yes, there are some contaminants in the food, but the way that you're eating it, no problem. You can eat more. Okay? You should eat more, like, like fish, for example. Okay. And then um, uh, we also took 76 samples, so only about half of the participants provided us with samples. Most of them are women, 49 women, 27 men. Now, our hair grows about one centimeter or half an inch uh, per, per month. So we measure three centimeters of hair, so that represents about three months of hair growth or three months of mercury exposure. Okay? So all the results we saw were all very low. So, which is not surprising because we found that you eat very little fish. Right? So if you don't eat fish, you have very little mercury in your hair. So that, that's good. Now, People were, uh, the main concern about mercury is the mercury affects the fetuses when the, when the ladies are pregnant. So it affects the growth, the IQ, etc. So young young, we, we worry most about young ladies uh, not to eat too much fish that have high levels of mercury. But in Six Nations, no worry at all. Don't worry, just eat more fish. Okay? Good protein, good, good nutrients. Okay, uh, and then drinking water. Uh, so we, we took tap water from, uh, from uh, 39 houses. Uh, and then we found uh, higher levels in some houses on some of these metals. These metals are not toxic. It's not, uh, 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 doesn't cause any toxic effect to your health, but it tastes bad. Okay, so, uh, uh, so 16 homes we saw higher levels of Aluminum, copper, iron, etc. So they, they look, they ha have a color like iron, we have a like orange, rusty color, uh, and taste bad. So, uh, and, and we talked to the, the water treatment guys and said, well, because this were, the water wa was collected in the old treatment plant days. So with the new treatment plant, this problem has been taken care of. So it should be okay. Okay? We also look at nine metals that are toxic, so if these metals are higher, then it become a health concern, and then none of these are high. So your drinking water is okay. okay? And we also look at uh, three surface water for pharmaceuticals, one upstream and two downstreams of the uh, water treatment plant. Okay? Now this is, uh, you guys have, we found 21 different Jugs in those surface water. So that includes like anti diabetic drugs, antibiotic, 
whole bunch of things. Okay. And at the level instead of, of these drugs, this is something that we don't like to see. We don't want to see so much so pharmaceuticals in the surface water. Okay. Do they affect human health? Probably not. Do they affect wildlife health? Maybe. Okay. So there, there are some uh, 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 literature showing that some uh, water bugs or, or algae may be affected by these, these drugs. So we have a little bit of concern. Now, remember, these, these are, uh, um, uh, drugs in the surface water is not only coming from First Six Nations. It's all the way coming from the, the Grand River, from you know, upstream, right? from London, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a, a, a bigger problem. So we need to work together to identify that. So as a result of this, uh, we talked to the health department and also the environment department here. So we, we decided to go back and do 10 more samples and also look at the well water in the wells that are closer to the river to make sure that the well water is not contaminated by the river water. Okay? So we will do the sampling probably next week or, or the week after, and, and so we will naturally know the results ASAP. Okay? If we do still see high levels of these pharmaceuticals in the water around here, then we will work with the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Environment in Ontario to do something about that. Right? It's a matter of upstream water treatment plant need to do a better job in controlling this kind of uh, uh, drugs in the, in the river. Okay. So finally, a few conclusion. Uh, so uh, in, in general, the diet of First Nations in Ontario uh, have some, some uh, uh, room to improve. Uh, we can get, uh, 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 the, the quality can be better. Uh, food security is, uh, is at higher rate in, in than, than Canadian average, and that needs to be addressed. Uh, overweight, obesity, smoking, diabetes are major issues. Something needs to be done. Okay. Uh, and finally, uh, the, the conclusion is that the, the contaminants is not a major issue. Uh, and uh, uh, for, for the summer pharmaceutical, there's something that we need to continue monitoring it, make sure that it's not high, and do something about it. Okay, so that's the highlight of the results. Um, the whole report uh, for Six Nations, uh, 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 we uh, have given uh, uh, Terry and the uh, department, uh, the chief uh, uh, on the chief and council, different copies. So you can always get a copy from us as well, either hard copy or electronic file. The whole of uh, all the uh, uh, studies we have done BC, uh, uh, Manitoba, and Ontario. On the Ontario report will be released in two weeks' time. It's still in the press. Uh, so, and everything can be downloaded from this website, www.fnfnes.ca. And that's our email address and phone number. Call us anytime if you have any uh, questions, uh, uh, or talk to Terry, and Terry can uh, uh, relay your concern to us as well. Thank you. Questions? <laughs>